Okay, welcome to the third and hopefully final part of the friction lab analysis. We introduced our raw data, put the table in, introduced the process da uh, data, put the table in, and this process data table introduced new values which we calculated. So we have to explain those calculations and the best way to do that is using sample calculations which we perform using uh, the equation builder. So there's one final sample calculation to explain <clears throat> or to, uh, to provide. It's the fluctuation in the max static friction. So here's what we can say. We can say the static friction measurement, uh, or maybe we say the static friction force fluctuated across the three trials. It wasn't the exact same value like we would have seen in a perfect ideal experiment. No, there's fluctuation here. <clears throat> to quantify the fluctuation, uh, what can we say? I used half of the range of the of the three trials, or half of the range. Let's just leave it at that. So that makes sense, right? Because the range is just how much there is. It's the amount of newtons from the biggest to the smallest. That's what the range is. You know, from this biggest value to this smallest value. How much is there? That's we call that the range. And then you take that range and you cut it in half, so half the range. And then we insert an equation, insert equation. You can also hold, uh, if you're on a PC, alt and plus enters an equation. So OK, fluctuation, I'm going to de-italicize equals, and then I'm going to make my uh, fraction. So I type the fraction bar, that's the question mark one, and then I hit space. Or we go up to fraction, choose fraction. So I, I'll just type max minus min over 2. And then I hit equals. And I, I use my arrows. I use left, right arrows and up, down arrows to move back and forth in the equation. Up, down, right, left, right, left. OK, what was the maximum? I'm still sticking with these, you know, this first, first uh, set of data. That's really what I'm using for my sample calculations. And we're just kind of saying it's the same thing for all the others. OK, so the max was this. I'm going to copy, Control C, Control V to paste. I better add my units. Oops, let's de-italicize. Minus the minimum, Control C to copy. Make sure if I do this, I'm not in the equation. Whoops, let me undo. Make sure I'm in the equation. And what did I get for the fluctuation in the first trial? 230, that's the first row. The fluctuation was 0.22 newtons. Let me de-italicize. Always de-italicize the units. All right, <clears throat> so now we have to enter our, uh, copy in our graphs. Now I can see already, I'm not gonna have room to do that on this page. And I don't wanna say, here's what I wanna avoid. The graph below illustrates or plots the data, however you want to put it, for uh, <clears throat> maybe plots the static friction data. I'll do that one first. Okay, this is not good. I don't want my graph to be on a separate page from the heading. Even if it were, even if the heading were like way up here, I still want to move this down to the next page so that it all fits. So what I'm going to do, I can hit a bunch of enters like that and just move it down. But you can also hold on your keyboard, you can hold Control, hold Shift, and then hit Enter with the other two held down. And that, you know, every time you do that, you create a new page break. Regular old Enter just, just does a line break. Control, Shift, Enter does a page break. Okay. The graph below, and now I want to make sure I've got extra lines so that I can easily click underneath the graph to continue typing. All right, let's go to Excel. Excel. I click on the white space somewhere in the corner of my graph. I on my keyboard, so with my mouse, I click on the on the white space. On my keyboard, I hold Control and I push C. Oops, I'm click away. Hold Control, hit C to copy. Go back to my uh, Word. I hold control and I push V to paste. And again, the options come up. This looks decent the way it is, except I want these all in Times New Roman. So let me, the best, the easiest is just to go back to here. 
<clears throat> fix the font in Excel. I'm going to click on here, go to Home, and then Times New Roman. And I hit Enter to save the font. Check this out. You click on here. Look, notice, by the way, I'm only clicking once. I'm not going into the text, right? Because then you have to highlight everything and do it. So I'm going to click once. I hold Control and I push Y, and it repeats the formatting that I just previously did. I click Control Y, click Control, hold Control and hit Y on the keyboard. Control Y, Control Y, Control Y, and Control Y. But then I want to do the axis, the numbers. So Control Y, Control Y, and one last time. Get it. Now I click on my graph, I hold Control, and I push C to copy. Paste. There's a bunch of formatting options. If you paste it and you don't change the paste option, it's going to link this graph to Excel. So if you change anything in Excel, it updates the graph. You may not want that. You can do embed workbook, um, keep source formatting and embed. I actually just do it as a picture, personally. Um, I think that's the easiest. It may lose a little clarity, but that's fine. Uh, I like to center the graph, but you don't have to. We should give it a title, graph one, static friction analysis. Um, it's kind of redundant to have this graph title and also this title. So you might just call it graph one, and now you, you, know, you can refer to it as static friction. You can keep static friction. You could actually remove this altogether if you wanted and just copy it in like that. This would be fine. Make it a picture. <clears throat> uh, but there's, I kind of, I tend to just do it this way. It's redundant. That's okay. I've got the graph twice, you know, the title twice. Okay, the graph below plots or illustrates. You don't have to use the exact same language. You know, you can you can get a little fancy. Illustrates the kinetic friction data. All right, I'll say graph two kinetic friction analysis. Alrighty, Excel. I click in the white space in the corner. Control C on my keyboard. I go back, Control V, and I change it to a picture. Okay. And I can easily click underneath. I don't have to worry about, you know, going here and hitting enter. Okay. <clears throat> and time for the analysis. Your evaluation, this is, we're going to do an evaluation section. You can bold it if you want, evaluation, underline, whoops, evaluation. And you might label this uh, data, I don't know, data collection, data collection and processing, data analysis, whatever you want, whatever you like. Whoops. <clears throat> In the evaluation, your first paragraph what you want to do is state whether the graphs do or don't illustrate a direct proportionality. Now, there are two things that have to happen for a direct proportionality, right? Direct proportionalities have to start at the origin, and they have to be a straight line. Of course, the line of best fit is straight. We said draw a straight line. The question is whether or not the data forms a straight line. So you can discuss that. I mean, look at this one. There's less straight of a line because there's more up-down fluctuation of the data points away from the line. You know, this one fluctuates quite a bit up. This one fluctuates a decent amount down. Uh, but you can talk about not only the fluctuation, but also the error bars. I mean, this is kind of, you know, that second point, I think it counts as being on the line. Sure, the dot's not on the line itself, but the error bars pass, the line passes through the error bars. Um, so this one, maybe there seems like it, maybe the error bars are too small. I mean, you can't even see them. So maybe my fluctuation actually is bigger than what the three trials would, uh, would have suggested. There is more fluctuation in this data point than the three trials represent. Um, <clears throat> so talk about Talk about those two things. First, does the graph form a straight line? Do the, 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 do the data form a straight line? Right? Do the data form a straight line? Uh, you know, you talk about does the line pass through 
does the line pass through the error bars? Then the other thing you want to talk about is the y-intercept. Because, well, we can't really see if it goes through the origin, but the y-intercept tells us whether or not it gets close. Um, does the line go through the origin? That's the other requirement for direct proportionality. Now this one, I count that, I think that's certainly close enough to zero. But here, 0.23 newtons as the y-intercept, eh, it's starting to feel like maybe that's, you know, maybe there's some, some error. The whole graph might have been shifted up a little bit, causing there to be this y-intercept. Right, the graph is supposed to go straight through like this, and it looks like the whole thing has been shifted up ever so slightly to here. So, you know, it's something for you to consider. Is that a significant shift? By the way, we call that a systematic shift in physics, a systematic error, because every single data point has been shifted up from where it should be. Systematic error. Okay, well anyway, you can you can talk about whether or not you think the y-intercept is sufficiently close to zero, does the graph go through the origin, talk about that language. When you do this analysis, do it separately for each of the two graphs. So, you know, discuss these questions in uh, relation to the static friction graph and also the kinetic. You can put those two discussions together, intertwine the two, or you can separate one for static, one for kinetic, that's your choice. See what you, whatever you think flows best, the way that you're explaining, go with that. Second paragraph, state the physical quantity that the slope equals and explain how you know that's what the slope is equal to. So remember, slope is y over x. By the way, this is very, very briefly explained. This does not have to be long at all. One or two sentences is plenty. Slope is y over x, right? Friction force over normal force. What does that equal? We did this in our notes before we uh, went down to the lab. We discussed this very question. Um, if you want to, you don't need to use equations to do this. You can just describe verbally. But if you think about slope is y over x, well, that's not totally true. It's delta y over delta x. But in a sense, it's also y equals x because when the line goes through the origin, as these should, that's the equation. The y-axis is the friction force. The x-axis is the normal force. And if you divide both sides by Fn over Fn, friction force over normal force, that is literally the definition of mu. So the slope is equal to the coefficient of friction. So discuss that in your uh, evaluation in the second paragraph. Just briefly explain, you can use equations, but you have to provide a verbal explanation. And you might be able to do that, in fact, without any equations at all. It's simple enough, you know, y over x. All right, uh, and when I say y over x, you wanna talk in terms of like the y axis quantity, not just y over x. Don't say over, that's too informal, divided by divided by, or you could say the ratio of the y-axis quantity, quantity to the x-axis quantity, that kind of language. So be formal. I'm being informal when I talk about it right now. Once you explain what physical quantity slope tells us, state the values of mu s and mu k. To do this, no calculation is needed. You don't need to get a friction value and divide by the normal force. You simply have to look at your equation. The value of each is in those equations. Once you state, state which is bigger, mu s or mu k, and uh, describe whether, you know, state whether that's what you expected. You expect one of these to be bigger than the other. There is kind of a correct answer here. Normally one of them is bigger than the other. You can look back to your notes to find out. So just, you know, once you state the values, state is this what you expected? Is the correct one bigger? Your data may not, may not be what you expect and that's fine. So just say unexpectedly blah was bigger and that's all you need.